getting started with a size two round brush and I'm just going to add some water to it and make sure that my paints are activated because I mixed them a little while ago so they've dried in my palette. I've got this really really deep uh, burgundy color. I've got a deep brown that's sort of a ready brown and I've also got this really quite bright purpley pink which I'm going to be using for the petals of the blossom but I'm going to be diluting it a lot so you'll notice that this color is heaps brighter than the petals on the flowers um, so I'm going to be diluting it to make it nice and light just like the petal color so it's really bright in the palette but we'll be diluting it as we go and I've also got a brownie green as well over here, which you can see that the brown and the green have sort of separated a bit on the palette. So I'm just mixing that up again, adding some water, it's quite diluted as well. And I've also got a warm yellow for later on. So this flower is going to take, um, I guess a little bit longer than some of the other things that we paint because it's got a little bit more detail and I thought it would be good fun to actually um, I guess yeah it's still gonna be a loose flower but I thought it would be fun to add some more detail and depth than perhaps we normally do and I'm lucky enough to have a few samples of the real deal from my garden but you can just look at some photos or look at the ones here that I'm using so I'm just dabbing the excess water off the edge of my brush and I'm going to begin with the stem. So I'm grabbing this um, deep ready brown. And what I'm going to do is use just the tip of the brush. So I've got the paint on my brush, just dragging the excess off into my jar. And I'm going to use just the tip of the brush to paint the stem. So it's going to be long, probably a bit wonky and thin. Just curving across the page see the line broke there that's actually totally fine and it did so again there which is completely fine because i might even add a flower there in front to add some more depth so i'm going to then paint some stems just coming off here i'm working quite freely and sort of just making it up as i go and each of these will have a flower or a leaf or a bud coming off it. So I've got two here, three here, that kind of thing. Just seeing what happens. Loose broken lines are totally fine. Just using the tip of the brush. Just seeing what happens. Messies are absolutely fine. As I say all the time. <laughs> There we go, that's probably enough for now. And I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to make a start on some of my flowers. And I'll mention some brush strokes, including C curves and compound brush strokes, which sound complicated. They sound terribly boring. And I've got a whole tutorial about brush strokes that you should watch if you're not sure what I'm on about. It makes it all make a lot more sense and it's a lot easier than it sounds and I promise it's not boring um, but once you know those terms and what I'm talking about um, this all becomes much 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 easier and more fun so what I just did was I grabbed some of that pinky purple and I actually dipped my brush in my water to dilute it I didn't swoosh it I just dipped it and wiped the edges of the brush on the jar so I'll just actually show you again I grabbed my paint on my brush grabbed heaps of my paint onto my brush and then I dipped it and um, wiped the edge of the brush on my jar and I really hope that's in frame <laughs> so I might start up the top and work my way down so I'm actually moving my paper a little to be on a better angle moving these lovely flowers just slightly out of the way hopefully they don't get dipped in my paint <laughs> so I'm going to begin with a flower actually on the very tip up here so I'm just grabbing my paint again. Um, I might even do mine a little bit darker just so you can see what I'm doing because if it's too pale, you won't be able to see it on my page. So I'm going to begin with a top petal up here. 
doing a C curve where I really use the belly of the brush, then lift up at the top. And the same thing here next to it, mirroring it. So two C curves to create the petal. And then I'm going to work my way around doing the same thing over and over again. They're quite round petals. And if possible, I'm going to try and leave a little bit of space between some of the petals, but I tend to be a little inaccurate and messy sometimes, which is fine, but some white space is good. So you want a flower that looks a bit like that. Then grab some of your deep burgundy and actually dab that into the center of the petals. So you're using wet on wet technique, which is again another tutorial of mine if you um, aren't familiar with it, I'll tag it somewhere. <laughs> um, so you can check out that tutorial to know what I'm talking about. But basically I'm dabbing wet paint into wet paint uh, to create that lovely flowing effect. And I really only put a little bit of that um, deep burgundy in there. So I'm going to put another flower here coming off to the side. Might actually try and put it on an angle. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> So another one of these petals, I've got a little bit too much water in my brush. So another one of the petals and another one next to it. So the flower is side on. So we're just looking at the side of it. So up here, I'll just do sort of half a petal. And the same thing there, just sort of half a petal. And I'm leaving a space there where I'll grab this burgundy again. And I'm going to paint it's almost like a little bell shape where the flower connects to the stem and that burgundy is actually um, bleeding into the petals as well, which is really, really lovely and unique to watercolour. So I'm now going to do a little bud, which I will start with this petal colour, this petal paint. <laughs> I'll just dab off some excess and I might pop two buds here actually um, next to each other. So I'll just do, it's almost like one of the petals from before, but just a little bit smaller and a little bit um, thinner. And I'll paint another one next to it, but it's sort of hidden behind the other flower. And then I'm going to grab some more of my burgundy and just paint these little bits around the sides. And there we go. And I will be coming back in and adding more detail once this first layer of paint has dried. But as I said, I'm doing a little more detail than usual. So it means a couple more layers of paint, which is always really fun. I'll paint a leaf as well. I might actually paint two. So I'm going to be doing again, the same shape and technique. Oh, I've grabbed the wrong color. <laughs> I want to be grabbing this color that we used for the stem before. Oh golly, distracted. Um, anyway, um, I'm just going to paint over the top of my mistake. So similar shape to this petal, but again, a little bit taller and thinner and in a different color. And I'm also going to dab in some of this green for a bit of variety. And I'm going to do another leaf coming off over here too. Dabbing in some more of that stem color making a bit of a mess, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna continue this process the whole way down the page.
just finishing off with a few leaves that I'm filling in, using to fill in any um, gaps that I think, I don't know, just need something to fill them. <laughs> I've been really quiet painting just silently, so I'm getting used to talking again. Um, I'm just filling up a few little spaces with some leaves just sort of going by where I think it looks a little empty and might need some sort of filler. Um, so I'm using my brown sort of stem color and you'll notice that I've just sort of turned my green into a brown basically as well. And I'm just dabbing that in for a little variety. And then what I'm gonna do is let my stem of blossoms completely dry, completely, okay, no cheating. Um, I'm going to use the magic of video editing, but you'll have to move away and let your paints dry. And then I'm going to come back in and add more detail once it's all lovely and dry. All right, now that my painting is dry, I'm going to go in and add some more detail using wet on dry technique. And while my painting was drying, my paints in my palette have also mostly dried so I'm adding some water to reactivate them as well so that'll just take a minute to do and you might have to do the same if you've left your painting to dry and my hands might be a little purple <laughs> I'm not sure if you can tell but our house is really quite old and I've had to turn off the heat pump or our heater while I'm filming because it um kind of ruins the audio but it makes it very cold while I'm painting so hopefully you're a little warmer than me and maybe you've even got a cup of tea that you can warm your hands with or perhaps you live somewhere really warm I'm not sure if you do live somewhere warm or your house is just warmer than mine you might notice that your paint dries really quickly whereas here where I am um, and without our heater on, I've noticed that the painting takes quite a while to actually dry because it's so cold. So that's just an interesting thing for you to keep in mind. Um, anyway, I'm going to be using the wet on dry technique to add some more detail to my painting. And I'm just getting my colors mixed up, same colors as before. Um, I just realized that I didn't have quite enough so I'm going to be using this deep sort of burgundy color to add the stamen to my flowers. And I'm going to just move my paper a little bit so I can get a better angle for my wrist. So I'm going to be adding in some dots of this color into the middle of the flower using just the tip of the brush. And I'm actually going to add just with very absolute tip of the brush. I'm actually getting rid of any excess water. I'm going to do some little tiny brush strokes coming out of the flower. And I kind of wish I'd used a smaller brush now just to get that level of delicacy that I would like and accuracy, but that's okay. Just getting rid of the excess water again and really just using the tip of the brush for this. I'm going to do the same thing in each of these flowers. I'm actually not going to add the dots of paint now. I think that that sort of took away from the detail. So I'm just doing these little brush strokes using just the tip of the brush. I'm trying not to shiver from the cold too much. So I'm working quickly and messily, which is fine. And some of them are all going to be going the same direction. It sort of depends on if the flower is facing the viewer or if it's on its side on a bit of an angle. You might want the stamen going in a little bit of a different direction or just fanning out from the middle. Getting a little bit of darker burgundy in my brush. And I'm going to grab, I'm actually, I was going to use this orange color that I'd mixed earlier to do the dots of the stamen, but I think that instead I'm going to make my 
burgundy a little darker and more concentrated. So I'm adding in more of my burgundy and then I'm going to dab in a bit of brown just to darken it up. Oh, a lot. <laughs> anyway, don't mind me making a mess of my palette as always. So once I've got this really concentrated paint, I'm going to dab the excess off onto my cloth and just do, I'm going to start down here actually, some little dots using just the tip of the brush. And if you find that you're not getting the accuracy that you'd like with the dots and they're just sort of blobbish, your brush might be a little bit wet. And so just do the old trick of dabbing it on its side, which I possibly should have done here, but that's okay. <laughs> and I'm going to do them a little more spaced apart than I did at the start. And this is the thing with painting. It really is just trial and error, just sort of working out. Like I think these dots, there were maybe a few too many, too close together, maybe too neat. I'm not sure there's something about it. So I'm doing a little bit messier a little bit more um, sparse to get the effect that I like. And I think it looks better with a few less dots. And these are things that you just work out while you're painting. And it's not to say that that flower was ruined or anything at all whatsoever. It just, you know, um, it was a good experience for me. <laughs> all right. And now I'm going to add some shadows using this, the same color actually. So to do the shadows, I'm going to be doing wet on dry technique once again, and I'm going to be adding some of this darker color with a few brush strokes just on the sides of some of these leaves to begin with, to add shadow and depth. going to be using the same color again Ooh, my voice is going a little croaky while I'm talking to you um, and I'm just going to give the buds a little more definition so just using some little C curve brush strokes to add a little more definition here going to do the same sort of thing mixing up just a really dark bit of burgundy it's airing on the side of just being brown now um, and I'm going to just using just the tip of the brush add a little bit of shadow along one side of my stem as well really messy is absolutely fine encouraged of course Little bits of broken line are really good. I find if it's too neat, um, I don't know if, or if, if I'm trying to be too neat, I'm never quite as happy with my artwork as if I'm a bit more loose and free, or like today I'm shivering because it's so cold. And I'm trying to be consistent with which side of the stem I'm painting my shadow, but I also don't really worry if I muck up too much and I'm going to add some detail on the back of some of these flowers that are side on um, to show this little bell shape I'm never sure what it's called but it's where the um, the flower connects to the stem <music> one last bit of detail I'm grabbing some of the pinky purple we used for the petals to add a little bit more shadow onto just a couple of these flowers where they're sort of side on so these two specifically where I've got the stamen going off in a different direction I'm using this same pinky purple just to add a little bit more shadow on the other side not letting it touch the stamen while it's still wet because the color will of course bleed if they touch so be really careful not to let that happen but if it does it's also not the end of the world and I'm dabbing in onto that shadow that I've just painted some more of the burgundy 
So I'm mimicking that effect that we did earlier with the petals. And I think that I'm just about done. As always, I find that I can't stop once I get started adding shadow and detail and that sort of thing. So I'm just adding a little bit to this petal here. And I think I need to just put my paintbrush down. <laughs> But there we go, some really lovely, beautiful blossoms. I'm still painting as I talk. Oops. Do as I say, not as I do. You should, <laughs> if you're not sure if you should keep going, just, just stop and have a break. Don't do what I'm doing. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed painting these blossoms and I would love to see them um, share on Instagram. You can tag me at Ruby Tuesday Art. And of course, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a tutorial and share it with your friends if you think that they'll be interested as well. This will obviously help them because they will have an awesome new activity to have a go at, but also that does help me get found by more people as well, which helps me to keep putting out this awesome free content. So anyway, I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time.